Hello, and welcome to Presence Practice with Poonam and Parker. And hey, Poonam. Uh, hello. <laughs> the thumbs up. Okay. So the topic of this video is a guidance on rejection. Let's expand that. What's Eckhart's guidance on rejection? And there, this question wasn't expounded on, so we're, we'll just take it from a high level and maybe use some examples of what that might be about. Uh, so rejection, it sounds like there's a lot of expectation if there's disappointment, for instance, around the rejection. Otherwise, if there's no story, then there's no such thing as rejection. It's the story that turned it into a rejection. But let's say on the horizontal dimension, we are either fired from a job or if someone is breaking our, the relationship, it's over now, or maybe it wasn't even a relationship at all. It's just someone that we may have been attracted to and they say, you're not for me. I'm moving on. I'm not, you're not for me. And so uh, we can have a story making mind that picks yourself apart and says, well, these things were I was rejected because I'm flawed in these ways, or I was rejected and therefore I'm forever going to be rejected. And there's a history of rejection. So rejection is the, is the theme, but you can not consider any of that. And there's so much more that is opened up when we can stop the story making about uh, a situation or a person or ourselves any topic, there's so much more to be seen. So oftentimes if we're experiencing a contraction, for instance, in life, and uh, say that there's some uh, loss, right, through death or through illness or through uh, financial loss of some, of some sort, some kind of contraction. And uh, it's a, a, a much, uh, uh, tighter challenge than, for instance, a rejection of um, we're, we're fired or we lose a relationship, but it's still the same quality of consciousness as, that can come in, the same kind of story making element can come in and start to uh, drag, drag us down uh, 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 the bunny hole of why, how come, what's wrong, and we can just drop it and we get to see more that things shed from us and the new things come. So imagine like, I like to imagine that I have a pie of energy every day and I don't know where, sometimes I have an idea of where my, the energy is going to be spent, but at the end of the day, it never looks the same. We can never say why something happened or why something doesn't happen. But if you've spent a good 10% of your energy uh, in, involved in hanging on to something and now you know that they're, that that's it or rejected it's not going to happen if we can just drop the story making you can see that there's that there's you have some extra room now a lot of extra room to sit in nothingness because sometimes things just drop away we don't need to know why or how come or who was wrong we don't need to know any of that stuff just remain open. Maybe it wasn't good for you. Maybe it's not the, in your highest interest for something, for that to have went in the path uh, that you may have wanted it to go in. And to check the expectations. Oftentimes when, like for instance, let's say we have unrequited love and we hang on to it. Uh, we might start having fantasies and uh, telling ourselves fairy tales and imaginings that all of this supports expectations. It starts to build an expectation. And then we want to manipulate and control the situation so that we can get to the end that we want to have. And we're no longer aligned or in the flow. What is for us will be for us. When it's ready for that to drop away, it drops away. So the experience that you had of this unrequited love wasn't for nothing. There's plenty to, to grow from in those experiences. 
And all we have to do is notice, oh, look at these expectations and story making that went on. And now it's created this feeling of loss of something that I haven't even had or I haven't even really experienced other than the, in these fantasies. So Eckhart's guidance on rejection would be to be at ease, to just move gently with ourselves if we're feeling tender to move gently, that is what is, is the, the, the grief or the tenderness, that, that, this is this moment. And we, we sit with it. What does it need? Take good care of yourself. And at the same, at the same time, you can have a tremendous spiritual growth by seeing, being able to put the light on the unconsciousness that brought to you this to this place of perceiving it even as rejection. And then uh, that's all we have to do. We don't need to take another trip about, oh, I knew that, I knew that, and I did it anyway. It's useless. It's just another, yet another, we move from one pattern to the next pattern, and we can step out of all of those patterns. And you know, I've, how many stories have we heard about people, for instance, that have had, um, that they, they had this job, they had this dream job and the job happened and then they lost it or they had, or, they, or some illness or some incapacitation or some situation came in that said, no, that future that looks so clear is no longer clear. It's, it's, it's not going to happen. And then they end up doing something else that's even far more in alignment and far more beneficial for not just them, but for all of us. And there are countless stories of where limitation has given us a great gift. So if we're rejected and we feel like it's rejected in uh, our career or with our schooling, that we're not getting where we want to be, just let go. Let your life unfold. It doesn't mean that we do nothing. It means that we are present for what's coming up. We're not missing being in alignment because we're in the flow, we're in it. So two hands on the horizontal dimension, Please take care of yourself and offer yourself lots of loving um, attentiveness. Sit quietly, take, take hot baths. And I think Lori from the group said, take some Epsom salt and some candles in and just really pamper and take care of yourself. So that's on the horizontal. Uh, and that will immediately alle alleviate uh, some of the physical manifestations of being, you know, contracted in the idea of rejection. And then the, uh, the vertical is uh, celebrating the awareness that you have that of whatever brought you to this place. And uh, I'm sure there's lots of different angles to look at this but that's a, that's a few that's a few of them <laughs> and breathe do breathe if you're experiencing this remember to breathe and there's lots of breath work videos on this channel so look them up and do whatever you're drawn to You know, because the alternative is to sit and fight. You know, fight. That's like, it's just, it, it creates like this, it, it should, if something should be different than how, it should be different than how, how it is, is it? but it's not. <laughs> um, Punem. Poonam and I are not, uh, I, I get the feeling that this question was asked about relationship. I do see 
a lot of pining for people that are in relationships to be in them. And I also see people that are in them can't wait to get out of them. So, but Poonam and I stand outside of that uh, uh, these days. So, um, you know, let me give this to you um, from the perspective of. I think Eckhart has a, um, I don't remember the talk, whether it was uh, the movie show of our life or story making. There was uh, some talk of his where he talks about, you know, like somebody left us and we make a story called um, She Betrayed Me or He Betrayed Me, mm -hmm. right? And he goes that betrayal is the story, the fact of the situation is he or she got up and left yes right that's all there is to it but then we add on this whole uh like adding cayenne pepper and bay leaf and all kinds of uh, uh, you know all kinds of condiments to the story that he or she betrayed me the reason we add the story is that person has torn down our ego. When they said, when they rejected, whether it's a job or whether they uh, leave a partnership or a parent says, I disown you, or a child says, I disown you, I'm leaving, getting up and leaving. The fact of the situation is that that person is tearing your ego down you were ident you had an attachment to that person right there was a codependency you were so attached to that person that when they got up and left there's a void um Eckhart does a very good job of um explaining this i think it's chapter 7 of a new earth and it's available on youtube i can probably put a link to his explanation like 6 minutes into the video he talks about that the void is created, right? What we need to do is surrender. When that void is created, the ego will t start to band-aid, like heal the void by um, saying stories. She betrayed me. She's a horrible person. Uh, I'm, I hate her. I'm never going to see her or I'm never going to go to that store. Like if it's something that a store did, right? They gave us bad product. I'm never ever going to go to that store ever again. Or if they messed our car up, I'm never going to go to that uh, mechanic ever again, right? It just may be that that mechanic was having a bad day that day and did something wrong, right? They didn't put the lug nuts on our uh, wheel and the wheel fell off or whatever it may be, right? So yeah. instead of having the compassion, we'll, we'll say, I'm never going to go to that store again. So he says, we surrender to the void, like from presence, when that void is created, we surrender to it. And it's like, um, the void is like the tapestry of our life. There's holes in the tapestry, like the void has created holes in the tapestry. And in the surrender, the light behind the tapestry, so there's the tapestry, the light shines through and it shows the whole magnificence of who we are in our essence when we surrender. And that is why we over and over and over again talk about non-resistance. We just had a group meditation. We had two group meditations about resistance because it is the art. And, and that's the whole thing about uh, law of attraction, right? We don't know why this void is being created. No human can ever, we are such a speck in this whole cosmos that we are not going to know why is that void being created. Maybe the loss of that partner brings us another partner that is more loving and more compassionate and more generous with us than this person that, you know, Byron Katie has this beautiful way of saying, you are being spared. He, he or she left you she spared you or he spared you, right? So how do we know that this person will not end up being one that is abusive, physically abusive or verbally abusive or whatever? How do we know? 
So they're being taken away. Surrender. And that is grace. He says, behind the tapestry, when that light shines through, light of consciousness, that is grace. That is a moment of grace where miracles happen. And that's, that's what we need to trust. That in my surrender, why am I surrendering in my non-resistance when I have the energy field of presence when I'm still and I surrender to this loss? It's okay. I understand that my ego got torn down and this is my resistance wanting to create a story. Drop the story. I'm just going to surrender. Surrender to this loss. And next minute, you're going to see something really miraculous happen. So uh, to this, I would say uh, for the pi past five, six months, I've been having to go to work every day. And I've explained it to Parker that I love staying, like if I work from home, I, I love working from home because then I have energy to meditate. Like I can balance the being and the doing, right? I do th throughout the day for eight hours, but then I can go to my beingness and meditate. Look at how much grace I'm getting out of this whole coronavirus thing, that I get to work from home, that I can do the beingness so that I'm available to the Facebook group for the group meditation. I'm available for anybody. People call me during the day. People message me d during the day. I'm available to them, right? What if I was at work? Look at this, this disaster that everybody sees as disaster. I see it as a miracle. It's like effortless grace for me that I'm able to work from home and actually focus on what is more important. Our, our alignment with inner beingness is the most important thing. That is the primary focus for each and every human being. There is no other, um, there's no other panacea. There's no other antidote other than alignment with inner beingness, being presence. You were saying something, Parker. I want to highlight two things before we, uh, and I want to highlight something that you said uh, a, a minute ago, which, uh, what if it's a long-term, a long-term, let's say, I know of some people that have been in relationships for decades and their partner comes in and says, I'm done, I'm not doing this anymore, I want a divorce, or I want to end this uh, relationship. The same, the same, uh, if, if it was somebody you weren't in a relationship with at all, it's the same course, the same medicine is offered, which is stick with the facts, which are always neutral, that you cannot possibly understand how one thread, one event in the tapestry of your life situations, and as they all unfold, individual for each of us with lots of common ground, but the, the, the medicine is the same, to stick with the facts. This person was here, and now they're not here. This, this person has a letter that says this on it. Is there anything I can do about it right now? At this very moment, then get up and do it. If there's not, then we sit still with it. And the second thing is what if there's rejection, being rejected by the rest of the world? And there are many, many different ways that this materializes. There are people that are going through a spiritual awakening right now, and they're the only one in their friend circle and in their family, and they're feeling rejected, not understood. Again, these are still stories, and the medicine is the same. What are the facts? What are the facts you feel like it's creating? Well, it's not going to create a divide. It's not you versus them. It's, it's create divide. There's still resistance in that. It's it's a, a, some people that are going through a spiritual awakening will say, I don't feel like I'm really understood by anybody anymore. I feel like I'm rejected by my peers, or I'm just going to go and find my people now, or or nobody understands me, or these people don't like me anymore. I can say with, uh, if you're offering true spaciousness, just in general, it doesn't matter if they're waking up or not, a human being responds to spaciousness and they don't want to get away from it. 
and there's no criticalness. If you're sensing that you're being judged, just drop it. That's not your, that's not your problem. You leave them alone. We leave everybody alone. And if they're, they're judging us, we leave that alone too. Uh, so, or, or you're rejected because you've created, made a crime and you're sitting in prison or you know someone that's sitting in prison or you're holding a lot of, um, you're feeling like you did something where everybody doesn't like you anymore and that you're being rejected. It is still the same medicine. It's still the same medicine. And so, you know, we, we can't tell each other what we're going to do in any given situation. It all depends upon how, how, what our, what our depth of consciousness is that, which means can we sense stillness underneath and around every activity and every word? Yes, Tina, what are you going to add? You know, Byron Katie has a very sweet uh, way of putting it. Like after 20, 30 years, I think some woman asked about her husband that passed away, that she's maybe she had a long uh, marriage, like a, a 10, 20 years. Byron Katie says, she goes, uh, my best friend passed away. Now I'm lonely, right? I, that's almost akin to the rejection. I'm lonely. And she huh. goes, now you be your own best friend. And that means in her saying, in Byron Katie saying, you be your own best friend is when we are aligned with our beingness, with our inner beingness, we don't need relatives or any um, uh, family member or coworker or anybody to tell us that you're, I approve of you, right? We, we seek that joy of beingness. The joy of being conscious is the joy of being, is that joy, right? When we are aligned with our inner beingness, there's nothing else. That's the joy. And other than that, we don't need in another person, like if they reject us, no, we stay in our joy. The joy is whatever we are doing in the present moment, drinking a cup of tea, drinking a glass of water, that's the joy that we just express. Like Eckhart says, right? Be the window frame and just let the consciousness come through. And that's all that is needed. All this is just words, right? Nice. 30 year marriage, let it go, let it go. That means God is telling you, planetary intelligence is telling you, you have been so attached to that person and the idea of marriage that you're not aligned, you've forgotten the real thing. You've forgotten your alignment with inner beingness. You're here in your drama of your marriage. Come back here. That's all planetary intelligence is saying, right? Yes, and when you're, when you're in that space, you're already whole. And then if you happen to meet somebody that you wanna do two whole people and do, you know, then that that's fine. But if we're if we're con if we're going into and seeking relationship from a place of lack and incompleteness, as Eckhart says, we then create lack. I think that's it. We should stop. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>